everyone. Welcome to our next Life Hacks video. I'm Meg, a librarian here at Mentor Library, and I'm here with Amber, another librarian. And we're here to help you with budget basics. So if you know nothing about how to manage your money, what to do with it, um, we're here to help you. So just a reminder, Life Hacks are the foundational skills and knowledge that will help you excel at the tasks of adult life. So things that you don't maybe learn in school that will help you in the real world. And then so today I'm going to be talking about a budget, what it is, why you might want to have one, and how to get going with that. Yes, then once she's done, I'm going to be telling you what to do with that money to make sure um, you're saving it and where to keep it maybe, and then what, how you can access it with banking. So let's just jump right into what is a budget. And we're specifically talking about personal or household budgets. A lot of times in the news, you'll hear about companies having budgets. And I think that's kind of more where it started, but we're definitely focused on personal or household ones. And at its most basic, a budget is a plan noting what money you have coming in and what money you have going out. So income versus expenses. And so very basically a budget is a tool. So therefore it's a tool that's meant to help you keep track of stuff. Specifically, it's to record, track, compare, and map your finances. Also importantly, it is written. Um, so this is to like really map something out or to really see how your money is being spent, where it's going you really need to write it down, have it written in some way. Now, this could be like pen and paper, old school with a calculator, or there's so many different ways to do it electronically now from spreadsheets to apps. I know my bank offers as part of my the app that you can do budgeting work right in there in that app. And so it's free for me to do it that way. And then the last thing that's important to know about a budget is that it is never really finished or completed, which might sound daunting, or a little scary, but really it just means that you have to continually review it and make revisions to it. So then why? Why would you want to develop and use a budget? Most basically, again, it's so that you have enough money to pay for things when you need to pay for them. That way you're never worried about a surprise bill or not knowing when your next paycheck's coming kind of thing. And as a life hack, part of what this, why you might want to use it is because it will help you under, with understanding, having knowledge and control over your finances, which hopefully will create, have you have less confusion and, and less stress about what's happening. And so that's because you can look for patterns, you can make adjustments, you can make informed decisions and you can plan for the future. Having a budget will also allow you to set and achieve goals related to your money. And so this might be mean that it will help you get out of debt or it'll help you avoid debt. Uh, it might help you make sure that you have an emergency fund and then it can also help you to save for making big purchases. So now the nitty gritty of how to do this. It's complicated, but it's not. It's like, it sounds scary, but it, in the end, it really is just about gathering, recording and calculating your numbers. And those numbers are made up of your income. So money coming in and then your expenses, which is money going out. So to gather numbers in terms of income, you need to count everything. And so this is specifically your net pay, which means that's after taxes or any deductions that come out of your paycheck. So it's your take-home pay, or it could be government benefits such as unemployment insurance or social security uh, checks or disability things. And then there's also things that could be like uh, returns on your investment. If you have rental or real estate property, Again, most people, especially young people starting out, don't have those things, but the most important thing is all the money that you regularly have coming in, you need to note that. And so basically that would be looking at your pay stubs, at benefit statements, and at bank statements. 
then you got to figure out the expenses. So that's all of the money going out on a regular basis. And so this is where the list gets long. So we're going to look at this and we're going to go through it. So there's housing. And so that would be your mortgage or your rent. That would be insurance related to either of those things, as well as, uh, especially if you own a home, any maintenance that would be regularly happening. You also need to look at utilities, uh, which this would be any that aren't included in your rent. So that would be electric, water and sewage, heating, depending on if you use natural gas or electric, you know, that might be a separate expense. Your trash pickup, if you have to pay for that, as well as phone and internet. But we'll talk about that a little bit again later. Then there's transportation, which is all any sort of car payments that you might have, insurance, fuel, any maintenance that you need to do on your personal vehicle, or it could be like bus passes or transit passes, whatever you're regularly using, that's what you'll need to note. We've got grocery and household items. So that would be your food, paper products, cleaning supplies, personal care, which is, would be like toiletries as well as clothing haircuts, those sorts of things. And then entertainment, that would be, you know, movies, concerts, any sort of gaming that you're paying for regularly, hobbies. I would definitely say an entertainment would be restaurants or takeout or carry out kind of stuff. And then also maybe your internet services. Again, that depends on, you know, if you, if it's like a utility that you have to use versus entertainment for more like fun stuff. So that might be like cable or satellite or the streaming services as well. Then I kind of put, we have other here listed and that's just anything else that I haven't already said. (laughs) Uh, It it sounds like a lot, but there might be things that don't fit into one of those categories specifically, but that you're regularly spending. So you need to count those. And then same thing with debts, that would be like any credit card balances that you're regularly paying on, or in my case, student loans. And then savings, this would be if you're, already saving towards an emergency fund or big purchases. Again, that was a lot of things. The the thing here is don't get bogged down by which category something fits in. What matters is just finding all of the money that you're spending and having it accounted for in your list. So to, to get started on this budget, you might already have those numbers from like the last month or so. If you don't, then it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to make a budget. So starting today, I'm going to save every like receipt, every bank statement, every pay stub so that I can, for the next month, account for what should be going into my budget. And then once you have that complete list of income and expenses, you have a baseline basic budget uh, happening there. And so once you have that, you got to compare your income to the expenses. And there will be one of three scenarios. It would be you have more income than expenses, which is a good thing. We like that or we want that, in which case you can be having some savings then. You might also have where it kind of balances out and break in or, you know, what people call breaking even, which is good because it means you're not having any debt but it's not good because you might not have anything to put into savings for an emergency. And then the third scenario would be that you have more expenses than income, which is not a good thing, which means you're probably going into debt somewhere. And in which case, what you need to do then is look at cutting expenses. And so again, this is all the process of developing the budget once you're looking at expenses, what, you, what is helpful to know is what is fixed expenses versus variable or flexible expenses, which fixed are things that are the, the same amount like pretty much every month and they're a necessity. So again, that would be like housing, that would be probably your phone bill, that might be your trash pickup kind of thing. Food is one of those iffy things because it is clearly a necessity but at the same time, you can change how much you spend on that. So it's kind of like in, in between the two. And then flexible or variable expenses change depending on a variety of factors. And one of those factors might be how much you choose to spend on them. And so you might need to cut something, especially people usually look at the entertainment um, as one of the first things that gets cut. 
So once you figure all that out, you have a budget. And so then all you have to do is stick to it, which might be the trickiest part. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. Thank you, Amber. So now that we've learned you know, how to allot your money and, and create a budget, I'm gonna be talking about banking, which is an option a lot of people choose for how to store their money for you know, to, where to keep it. The reality is a lot of times using pure cash is not practical for making a lot of purchases, making a lot of payments. So having a banking account is a very prudent choice for keep storing your money. Um, it'll give you a lot of options for saving it as well. So I'm going to be talking about that today. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is a debit card versus a credit card. Now, these are both things you'd have to have a banking account to use. So these are both, they look very similar. They both look like a little plastic card that you'll see people using at a store to make purchases. So what is the difference between these two type of cards? So the first one, a debit card is tied to your bank account, checking account. And basically a good way for me that I think about it is with a debit card, say you have $200 in your account, that's pretty much all you can use. You can make up to a $200 purchase. Credit card, you're given a line of credit, which means you're, you can make a purchase higher, but you don't have to necessarily have $200 in it to make that purchase. It's a, you're, you can make a payment on it later. So you can make a payment on a credit card purchase later than the actual time of purchase, whereas a debit card, you're kind of making the purchase then and there. There's no interest on a debit card. So no worries about that. Um, fee free, it's usually free to open and create it, get a debit card. Thing is, there's no rewards, which is something that credit cards off, offer a lot of times as an incentive. There also may be fees to get a credit card. So like sometimes with a lot of credit cards, you know, for every purchase you make, you earn like 1% of whatever you paid towards some sort of reward, whether it's like gift cards to different things. One example I know of is there's like a Disney one where, you know, if you, for every purchase you make, you get money earned, which you can earn towards like a Disney, you know, gift card that you can use for Disney stuff. So that's kind of one example of a reward um, that's associated with a credit card. Another big thing with a credit card is having one and using it and making payments on your credit card does impact what is called a credit score. Now, credit score is a big thing for if you have to one day make a big purchase, such as buying a car, um, buying a house, becoming a homeowner, any sort of big purchase. A lot of times, if you need to get a loan for something like that, having a good credit score is going to be so helpful. And basically, your credit score is gets good when you show that you make your payments on your credit card. So say you make a purchase on a credit card, if you pay that in a timely manner, usually you get a month, you know, like you, payment due dates are like once a month. If you show that you're responsible and pay off your credit card, that increases your credit score, which will allow banks to give you loans more easily and give you better deals on um, interest rates um, when you're making big time purchases. So having a credit card, even though you think, hey, I don't make a lot of big purchases now or anything, it's still a good thing to maybe consider doing because down the road, hey, maybe a lifetime circumstance will change. That might be a good thing to have. So that's the basics of a debit versus credit. Now, checking versus savings account. So the difference between these with the debit card, you're going to be usually getting from your checking account, not from your savings usually, because savings is your savings account. You know, when you're trying to save money, you don't really want to have quick access to it. You don't, you don't want to get eat into that. You want to have that for when you really need it down the road. So savings account, you can access it through withdrawals and transfers. Um, you're not going to be having as many transactions with your savings account. So really, the, if that's really your piggy bank uh, account where you don't really want to crack that open unless you really need to. There is a, another perk for having a savings account. You do earn interest. Doesn't start out at a huge number, you know, if you're just starting out saving money. But you do, for keeping money in that savings account, you know, your bank will give you a little a, amount of interest each month for keeping that money in there. So the larger the amount that you have in there, 
you know, the more interest you're going to earn each month for that. The checking account is, you know, obviously you're going to have a lot more transactions with that, just making purchases. So this is usually, you know, when you're using a debit card, you're, you're going to be taking from your checking account um, to make these purchases in most cases. A thing with your checking and savings account is a lot of banks will require you to have a minimum balance um, in each account. So you ha might have to have a certain amount in your savings account and your checking account to use them. And then kind of what goes along with that, um, a lot of banks, you can link your checking and savings account together, meaning you can transfer money between them. So you can put money from your checking into your savings account, vice versa. So that is another thing to consider. So you can have both of these accounts at the same time. So another thing you can do with having a checking account, a banking account, is writing checks. So not just paying with a debit or credit card, you can also make payments using a check if you have a banking account. So I'm going to show you kind of the basics of filling out a check. So what you can do, you can fill out the date, which is right at the top. Okay, and so you want to put the date in there. That's a pretty important part. Then you're going to be writing out pay to the order. So that's who it's going to. The company, if you're paying an individual or a company, you're going to write. So in this case, we did some utility company. So you just type, write the name of the organization there. All right. And then you're going to be writing the amount that you're paying. So you're going to put a money amount in there down to descent. And I'd also say, say in that case, it's $55. If it was like $5, I might still put a zero five there just, you know, just to be safe. And then underneath that, in addition to, uh, you're going to actually write that same amount that you just wrote in like writing it out like that. So 55 and then 38 over a hundred. Now, really important part about this. If you see there in that example, after 38 over a hundred, um, there's a big line that's just to protect you so that no one can write in a different amount or change it or make any alterations. That's a, I would, you would always, after you finish writing it out, if you have any blank space, fill that blank space up. Um, that's just a precautionary measure to protect yourself from fraud. Then next, you're going to be doing right there, you're going to write who it's your signature. So you're going to sign your name in cursive there. And then to the left of that, on that other line, that's like the memo. That is to write like kind of what you're making this purchase for. You know, so in this case, we're making an electric bill payment. So right there, it's written August 2021 electric. And then another thing with writing these checks, a lot of times what you'll do, you'll have a little check log book to log all the checks that you've written out. You will usually put that little memo in so just to ref for your own reference to know like what um, checks you've written out and why you made them, what you made that purchase for. So that's kind of just an organizational thing to help you out, right? So that's the um, basics of uh, writing a check and having a, a basic banking account. Okay, so here are some resources that we used to come up with this short video about budgets and some banking stuff. Especially the first two are some great websites that have many articles about many different finance topics. LinkedIn Learning is a service that you can get through the library, and it also has a, a lot of different videos about how to do different personal finance things. And then we also have a couple of books here that have been useful in, in figuring out some of these life hacks things for you. And so those are available through the library as well. So you can always check those out to get even more information. Yes. And since this video um, is part of our life hacks, you can earn a button for watching this video. So please visit us at the desk, you know, um, and you'll get a little button for earning this with each button you earn for coming to one of our life hacks programs or watching one of our life hacks videos, you are entered to win a prize at the end of the series. So please come get your button. They're pretty cute. And uh, you can put them on, you know, your jacket or, or anywhere else you'd like. We've, all, we've already had our Life Hacks intro, so that's another one. And then you could earn one for this one as well. And then as also, as a reminder, please feel free to email, email us anytime at ask at mentorpl.org with any questions you have, any sort of ideas you have for what you'd like to learn at Life Hacks. We, we're really doing this for you so that you 
can feel confident about all, you know, the things of adult life, like that we're teaching you today. So, so let us know, hit us up if you have any questions and, and thank you so much for watching this week. Yep. Thanks again.